Last time, if you remember, I was fitting the knife hinges to our small cabinet. And they're working really well now. Today, I just want to run through some of the finishing touches that I'm going to do to this cabinet. They're not all necessary. A um, couple of them I would strongly advise and I'll show you how I do those. If I talk you through the other things I'm going to do and then the next time you see the cabinet it will probably be glued up and I'll be able to show you how I finished mine. One of the essentials I think is to have stops for the doors because at the moment although they won't close completely into the cabinet they go further than we want them to. A simple fix for that is to apply some blocks on the inside of the cabinet and we just glue those at the point where we want the door to stop. We could have a central one which would stop both doors or we can place one for both doors out towards the side so it stops the door behind this area that makes it less obtrusive inside the case but you do end up with one stop for each door I'll show you an option that I'm going to employ and it can be used either for a single stop for, for each door or a single stop for both doors I've come up with a little latch to hold the doors shut and to provide a positive backstop for them as well when the door is pushed against this bevel it springs down the door can ride over this lower section hit the backstop and then the because it's sprung up it'll hold the door in place I'm actually going to mount this in the top of the cabinet and I shall put a solid button whose top surface is level with the bottom of the door down at the bottom so opposing this and that will stop the door being pressed down rather than the spring taking up the slack in this latch and I'll just show you how this is made up so we have got a small spring that comes from a pen a screw and then I've just shaped this little latch so we're beveled on the front so when the door contacts the front of this bevel it will push against the spring up into the top of the cabinet can then move along this ramp hit the back stop and then the pressure of the spring down on the top of the door will hold it in place and then I've just got a mortise for the whole assembly a tiny little mortise to hold the spring in place at the bottom and we can adjust the amount of movement by how tight we do the screw so before I glue up the cabinet I should be cutting the mortise preparing a second one of these latches pop those two in the top of the case and pop two little flat buttons into the bottom of the case directly below these and to the same height as the bottom of the doors another important point is that our components at the moment are all finished with sharp edges and sharp corners this is both uncomfortable to touch but also in certain grain directions it may lead to fibres breaking out on the edge so an important point is to at least ease the edges you may like the style of a, a crisp sharp edge but I really do advise that you at least knock a very tiny amount of material off the corner providing a very small bevel you won't notice it unless you get really close up or unless you feel it that will give a lot more protection to all the edges when it comes to the overlapping sides and the front on the top and the bottom of the cabinet I'm going to be putting a slight 
round on there. Not a full ball nose, but just a slight round. That will solve the problem of tear out and it will also add something different to the design. With all the doors and hardware removed I can now mark for the rounded ends on the top and bottom of the case. And I'll just mark a line against the side. Same at the top. And I'll do the same at the other end. Now I've just penciled in a centre line through the end of the board and this is the top that I'm doing at the moment and that centre line wants to be left until the final sanding we're just removing material on either side to provide the curve to avoid any tear out I've clamped a little block at both ends by starting off with the plane angled to the work I can avoid tear out on the show side of the board. Reversing the protection blocks allows you to copy the same profile on the opposite side. Use a long sole plane to finish up just to make sure your strokes are nice and straight. And then we can move these blocks to the other end and copy the profile yet again. And some sanding with a, a long block just finishes the job off. For those edges that just want a fine bevel, I use a smoothing plane held at 45 degrees set very fine count the strokes I'm taking until I get the sort of bevel I want and then repeat that number of strokes on all the other edges that I want and now that's much less likely to splinter the inside of the, the cabinet I'm going to finish in shellac. I'll probably even finish all the individual components with at least one coat of finish before gluing up and that will help me clean up any glue that might squeeze out on the joints. Clearly all the surfaces need to be prepared as well. We've flattened them with the plane and we've cleaned up where we've filled in the various defects on the cat's paws but before finishing we do need to give everything a good sanding and move through the schedule down to I'll probably go down to a 400 grit clearly we also need a way of opening the cabinet and because of the way the doors are fitted when they're shut we can't grab hold of them. So we'll need some method of opening them. At the moment, because there's no backstop, I can push one in and pull the other one open. But we're going to need to attach some sort of handle on the front here. I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do yet, so that'll be a surprise for you when you see it. But options would be to apply a small handle at the bottom of each door at the front. That's very inobtrusive and you could either do that in oak or perhaps something with a bit of a contrast to it. One of the things I was thinking of at the moment was applying a handle at the top of one side vertically and to the bottom of the opposite side. And if you're a bit of a traditionalist you might like to put a turned knob on. If you think you might be wall mounting this cabinet and it's a nice size for, for a wall mounted cabinet 
Now would be a good time also to fit a French cleat in the back here. Applying the cleat now will allow you to insert a couple of dowels at each side and perhaps one in the middle of the top. An alternative way of fitting a French cleat is to have a couple of screws through the back but this doesn't allow for fixings into the sides it's purely holding on the top of the cabinet both directly here and through its connection to the back and the other half of the French cleat is fixed to the wall you can see how it works the 45 degree angle at the top there acting like a, a hook and uh, there's a mating surface on the underside of the cleat on the cabinet.